Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of ThinkTech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. You know, being a lawyer is not only about the practice of law. Lawyers have clients and some lawyers even have friends. And those clients and friends have interesting business and personal activities that are not subject to the attorney-client privilege. And we can talk about them. We can share them. Today, we're going across the sea with my friend, Hawaii businessman, Robbie Jessel. Robbie likes to mix his business trips to various countries with walking. We call our program today, Old Man Walking, because we want everybody to know that there are healthy physical activities that become even better with the wisdom of age, with travel, with business, and on the ground experience. So, Robbie Jessel, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, how are you see doing? You. Doing uh, great. Very excited. Before we get talking about walking, tell me uh, a little bit about yourself. Uh, where do you live? What type of business activities you do? Please. Uh, well, I, I live in Manawili and I. Uh, I'm helping out and working with a company called Pacific Craftworks. Uh, they're a manufacturer of uh, cabinets and furniture and doors. And their plant is in uh, Vietnam, just outside of uh, Vietnam in, uh, in Binh Dong province. Okay, so P and Pacific Craftworks, you just explain a little bit more what, what they do. What type of furniture or what type of things do they build? Well, it's, it's basically a, a custom manufacturer. We'll build uh, uh, kitchen cabinets. Um, we work with, with the homeowners or the contractors or the developers, and we come up with the designs for uh, what their specific needs are with kitchens or bathrooms. We also do walk-in closets. Uh, everything is, is pretty much a custom job. Um, uh, uh, unless we're doing like a high rise and, and we get involved in the ground floor and we're doing all of the uh, uh, we're doing all of the cabinetry work in this high rise, uh, then it's um, you know one or maybe three or four different uh, plans that uh, a homeowner would be able to choose from. Okay. And we could build it and we build it. All right. And and you're you said the factories in Vietnam. The Vietnam, it's about 45 miles outside of Ho Chi Minh. Okay. So I generally uh, get to Ho Chi Minh and then uh, every day take the drive, which is actually a 90 minute drive outside of Ho Chi Minh, even though it's only 45 miles. And, and the products that are made there then get shipped to Hawaii and to be installed? Well, they get shipped all around the world, uh, wherever, you know, the clients are. But I basically, uh, I deal with Hawaii. And, and you travel to Vietnam and all over Asia, really, as I understand it, on business. Yeah, uh, I'm in uh, Vietnam three to four times a year. Uh, I go to the factory and uh, do what I have to do at the factory. And then I'm off to doing what I love to do. Okay, so that, that's, that, right. that, that's going to bring us to the title of our program, Old Man Walking. Now, let me ask you first question. Are you an old man? <laughs> well... I'll call myself middle aged. Okay. You know, I'm, yeah. Well, how old are you? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm in my 73rd year. Wow. And so I'm going to be 73. So still and, young. Uh, yeah. So I'm still, I figure I, I feel still very young. Okay. And you, and you said, you know, you, you, you love to walk or, um, and, and how, how does walking fit into your life and how do you mix it with business? Well, even when like, uh, when I'm in Vietnam and I do my work at the factory and then I come home, uh, I may walk around the city and I may go for, for enjoyment. hours just for, for yeah, enjoyment, just, just to, or exercise, for enjoyment or both. to see difference. Well, I, I, you know, the exercise comes in as a plus, but it's more for the pleasure of seeing what's, what's around me. And you don't get to see that in a car or on a mo scooter as, as easily as you do when you walk and go through the alleyways and whatnot. So you try so, to do that every day? Pardon? You try to do that every day? Every day. I try to do it. 
And, and when you're in Vietnam or when you're in any foreign country, is that's part of your routine? Well, part of my routine is I do my work and then I always spend a little more time in the area or fly to an area that I want to see and explore. So, and I've done that uh, almost every time I've been out to uh, Vietnam, I do a side, I'll call it a side trip. So that, that allows you to kind of mix business with the walking and get do both things while you're traveling. Yes, yes. Okay. And you say you live in Monowilly. I live in Monowilly. And we have, we have a boy. short we have a short video of you walking in Monowilly. So let's take a look at that. Okay, walking in Monowilly with Mark yeah. Schwab. Host of Law My, Across the Sea. Yeah. Mark yeah. Schwab. Oh yes. How are you doing? Okay. And just to give you a little idea of the beauty of Monowilly, I can even walk backwards. <laughs> Very talented. I do a lot of walking all over the world, but it's just so wonderful to wake up in the morning and to see the koalas and and be able to walk and be able to walk. Yeah, <laughs> ain't that the truth? Uh, but this is a a love of mine, a passion that I, I really enjoy. Seeing the beauty, meeting the people along the way, and uh, and dogs. Uh, dogs and cats, but it's a wonderful experience. Uh, you say you've walked all over the world. Where? Where have you walked? Uh, well, in in my uh, Asian travels, um, actually, I've been uh, to northern Vietnam in the mountains area, uh, Sapa. And uh, uh, there's five Hmong tribes up there. I, and I did a two-day, two-night homestay on this three-day walking trip. And I got to visit with uh, families and, and uh, eat the food and also meet uh, people along the pathway, whether they're uh, another fellow walker or the locals. Um, I really enjoyed that. And then... Uh, Dalat in Vietnam, uh, actually many places in Vietnam, I've done it in Laos, I've been to uh, Laos, and also China and Taiwan, uh, so, so then walking in all places. And, and so this business kind of gives you the freedom to do that because you're traveling and you also say walking is a love and passion of yours, so it's not just business that brings you, but you, you have this, this feel for it, right? You, it's, it's a love and a passion. What does that mean? Tell me, what, uh, explain what love a love and passion about walking means. Well, it means it gives me the opportunity not only to enjoy the beauty of where I'm walking, but also to meet the locals where I'm walking. And believe me, I, I have no uh, qualms about stopping and talking and-, and uh, You're not shy. These <laughs> I am not a shy person, so whether they speak English or not, uh, somehow we're able to communicate, and and uh, it's just very, very uh, pleasant for me and something I really enjoy doing. And you say in the video also that you like to see the beauty and meet the people, and you talk a lot about meeting the people. But let's take a look at about three slides before our break and describe what they are. The, let's take a look at the first slide. Where, where are you and who are those people? Okay, this is in the mountains in Sapa, and this is one of uh, a couple of uh, Hmong tribe uh, natives. Sapa and, is where? Uh, Sapa is in northern Vietnam. Okay. And uh, we're, we're talking, and uh, uh, they're trying to sell me some goods or, or something, and uh, very, but very friendly. I mean, you were, you were just walking on the, and walking, this is what came up. Just walking, and they came up to me, and I, and I came up to them, and uh, we started uh, trying to communicate some way. They don't speak English, obviously, and uh, but yet we're able to smile and, and uh, goodwill. It's good okay, will. let's take a look at the next. Okay, what's this all about? Well, this is, uh, I'm in the home of... Uh, this woman and uh, this, uh, there's a couple, they, it's a homestay and she's actually uh, getting the coals ready to cook my dinner. 
Wow. And, uh, and you know, and the, actually the meal was quite good. Uh, my guides uh, told them what I would eat and what I wouldn't eat. So not to insult anybody. Uh, I have a diet uh, that I, I, I'm pretty careful about. And, uh, oh, and by the way, that's another thing. When I do these hikes, especially in foreign areas where I, I don't know the routes, I try to hire a guide. And, uh, and the guide will, will be with me and I let them know what I'm uh, willing to do and how dangerous uh, you know, it would be. Uh, and I like to go at my pace. So mm -hmm. they all work we, within my pace. Old man walking pace is what we call old that. Old man walking. And, but and, I, I do have a pretty fast pace. Yeah, I, I know I you do. Yeah. I've walked with <laughs> you. Yeah. Okay, so, and, and you have a homestay and, and that's, you, you you pay for that. There's a there's a it's you're, it's with a family. Actually, uh, yeah, I, I arranged with the tour the tour guide, and I found the tour guide online. It was uh, very simple. Uh, I found the tour guide online. We communicated. Uh, she actually spoke. Uh, her English was quite good, and um, so I made the arrangements. She made the arrangements for the homestays. And, and uh, she knew the meals that I wanted. And then, you know, we got to spend time and actually sit down with the homeowners. And uh, she would interpret for me. Uh, and, and, and everybody was about. friendly and... Oh, extremely friendly. And what, what, nice. what are we talking about charges just generally uh, for this type of a thing? Well, that was uh, the, the, the two nights, three day, including meals was about... Uh, Seventy-five to a hundred dollars, wow. okay. and that includes the guide. Wow! And then you wow. tip. You got to tip. You yeah. know. Yeah. yeah, that's good manners. <laughs> and and then, then let's take a look at the next slide. Uh, and that's I think uh, same area. Okay. The same area, a different uh, tribes people, and I'm handing out kosher candies. <laughs> uh, I brought a bag of candies to the kids, and they all came around and. Uh, it was, they had a great time and uh, I was enjoying myself and you can see I have my backpack on. Um, so uh, yeah, it was, again, you meet the people, you have a conversation if you can, just just the inter interaction is, is a very positive thing and you have the scenery. And that's kind of, and that, and that the, the candies is, is something that you would typically do. I mean, you, you bring along yes. some, something just to hand out to kids or whatever, just to make friends. And adults and... too. Uh, I, I have a picture of me handing out to the uh, adults too, and they loved it. I mean, uh, you know, they're not expecting anything. And, and you're traveling uh, all alone, all by yourself, uh, basically with your guide, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I get the guide and, and uh, we travel around. And again, I, I've, uh, she's aware, this particular guide was aware. She told me one day it was uh, really wet. And she said, uh, this might be dangerous uh, for you. And, this, and, I, I, and she arranged for uh, a different route. And uh, that was, it was great. We had a great time. Okay, we're, we're going to take a one-minute break right now. And then we're going to come back and re take a look at some more of your travels, some more of your travel slides, okay? So hang on. Okay. Uh, don't walk away. Right. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha, y'all. My name is Mitch Ewan. I'm from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and I'm the host of Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy. We're on every Wednesday at 4 o'clock, and we hope that we have interesting uh, guests who talk to us about various energy things that are happening in Hawaii, all the way from PV to windmills to hydrogen, close to my heart, electric buses and electric vehicles. So please dial in every Wednesday at four o'clock on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha.
Aloha, welcome back. Uh, I am a old lawyer, Mark Schlav, host of Law Across the Sea, walking with a old friend of mine, Robbie Jessel. Uh, Robbie has been telling us about how he mixes his business trips to Asia with walking, one of his passions, meeting people, uh, giving out candy, and, and talking and watching and, and, and seeing the beauty of, of various places. So, Robbie, uh, yes. Are you, you didn't walk away from me. You're you're still there. No. All right. I'm good. still here. Okay. Now, uh, let let's take another look. I mean, it's it's very interesting. I mean, you're you have a guide, and you're you're putting all your trust in the guide, and uh, you're you you know it, it it seems like you're really enjoying yourself meeting these people. You know. I I do. Uh, it is uh, uh, it is wonderful. Um, and I'm, I've been very fortunate with the guides that I've had. And I guess uh, if somebody uh, wanted to replicate a trip, you could perhaps give some advice if, you ever, if they wanted to contact you. Is that a possibility? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I still have, I keep a record of the name of the people and how I contacted okay. them. And they're welcome to get in touch with them as well if they're still in business. All right, so let's now go back to the slides. I want to take a look at some more of the places you've been. Let's take a look at the next slide. Where's this? Okay, this is in Laos, and I, I climbed a small hill called Mount <laughs> Fusi. Which now, not I everybody believes is it a small hill, but yeah. <laughs> it, it really was, uh, but it was a wonderful climb and beautiful views. And again, um, a lot of people trying to climb it and it, it's not how fast you do it again it's not a speed race it's you're enjoying everything and the, the steps along the way you're enjoying life as you do it right i do and yes, and, and exactly. at the top of mount fusi as i understand there's a temple uh up at up at the top is that correct there is there is a temple up at the top and mm -hmm. i went to it i went inside uh yeah there's and on the way down too there's uh there's temples and and okay. uh religious and that's it, what what uh what town is that in in vietnam this is in no this is in laos laos, oh, laos. Uh, okay i'm sorry long prabang yeah Luang right prabang. okay long yeah. prabang and that's kind of an yeah. ancient uh, town in a way, isn't it? I mean, uh, it, but it's, it has French influence and that type of stuff also, right? Yeah, and I stayed in a villa, which was quite beautiful. Uh, Where was this? A, a villa? This, uh, yeah, I stayed in a French villa. It's a hotel. It was a it was a hotel, but it was a it was a French villa, and it was run by French uh, oh. French speaking people. Okay, let's take a look at the next slide. Okay. Okay. So outside of Luang Prabang, there is an elephant camp. And uh, unlike other places in the world, possibly Thailand or, or India, uh, African elephants, you can't do this. But uh, the, um, the uh, Laotian elephants are, are, I'll call them friendly. And I went to the camp. They're very well uh, looked after. Um, uh, so people that are worried about animals and whatnot and uh, animal rights and whatnot, these, these animals are very well cared for. And this particular elephant took me uh, down the river about a half a mile. And uh, just, it, it, again, it was a wonderful experience and talking to, to my guide that was on top with me and uh, enjoying it. And you know, it takes you outside of your normal uh, activities for sure. Yeah, it, it does. It does. Okay, let's take a look at the next slide. Okay, where are we? Now we're in uh, the Yellow Mountains in, uh, in uh, China. And I, again, it was a side trip. I flew to Huanshan in China. And uh, again, I, uh, through the internet, hired a, uh, a driver, uh, picked me up at the airport, had a little difficulty finding my uh, my my uh, hotel that I was staying at, uh, but it uh, because it was in a in, in an alleyway and to really crawl around. Oh, 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 
call from Vietnam. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so to get to this yellow mountain, uh, the driver took me to a bus stop and the bus uh, took me up about 20 minutes up the mountain. And then I had to take another, another um, uh, uh, gondola ride uh, up uh, to the top of the mountain. And uh, if I have time, I have a funny story to tell about it because I wasn't aware that there are no roads on the top of this. It's all pathways, so well-marked uh, pathways, concrete even. Uh, but I didn't realize um, I'm carrying my bag, which is a 20 pound carry-on bag. And you're going up and down these hills and my hotel is a 90 minute walk from where the gondola leaves you off. And I oh. didn't realize that. I thought, oh, there's transportation up there. There isn't, it's walking. <laughs> okay. And uh, you um, find again, you found this online. Is that how you found the hotel? And all I found the driver online, talked to him, called him up, okay. arranged for pickup, made payment. Yeah. And uh, it worked out great. Now in China, the driver didn't speak English. So um, we ended up communicating through uh, one of the chat programs because it, you're allowed to speak uh, English and what we chat. Yeah. So when you type something in in English, he gets it and he pushes a button and it comes out in Chinese. You know, and this is how we communicated. It's amazing how technology, <laughs> combines to make it so that you can enjoy nature. It's, it's interesting. That's an interesting twist. Let's take a look yeah. at the next, the, the next slide. Okay. Uh, okay. Now we're in Taiwan and uh, I, I'm at the top of uh, a mountain that I climbed uh, at uh, Taroko Gorge is on the bottom of this mountain. And uh, again, I hired a guide, same thing, online, found him. And uh, he, uh, this was a quite a tough climb for an old man, <laughs> uh, but still very doable. And he followed my pace, um, explained things along the way, because there are, you know, the nature and, and the, the trees or the So he, he's speaking and, English with you? He, actually, he was from, um, I think, the, uh, from uh, Netherlands. Oh, I see. And he, li and he uh, just happened to be an English-speaking person living in Taiwan, in, uh, in this area of, uh, of uh, Taiwan, and married to a local girl. I see. And so uh, he, like I say, took me up the hill. He had a fantastic lunch up at the top of this mountain. It's it's about a three and a half four hour hike. Wow! And, and like I say, it's it's a it wasn't an easy hike, but it certainly was exhilarating. And coming down uh, it was about a three hour, two and a half hour uh, hike down. And then he took me around to different areas after that. Okay, let, let's take a look at this last slide, which is kind of interesting. Uh, <laughs> that, that's you. Can you. See that <laughs> pathway is only and that's looking down at Taroko Gorge now that's a steep drop yeah uh, you know it's very steep all the way down and the pathway you can barely see a rope on the side of the mountain it's right. about uh, 24 inches wide the pathway and uh, you can hold on to the rope if you have uh, uh, if you're afraid of heights uh, I was pretty comfortable up there and uh, looking down, it was an amazing, amazing views, amazing views. So it sounds like you've really enjoyed all the, all these uh, adventures in walking that you've had and you were able to tie them. I mean, the, the nice thing is you can, you've been able to tie it to uh, your work in a way. And, mm -hmm. and, and so it kind of makes your work a little bit more fun, right? I mean, it, it kind of a little more enjoyable and like, and it, it makes your life a little more a little more fun too, right? Is that, that's what I'm it, hearing it, from it you. Is. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was a great time. Uh, all every one of my trips have been uh, wonderful. Like I say, there's other trips that I've done. You've highlighted a few of them. Um, 
and and I certainly enjoy my travels in Asia. Well, uh, let me ask you, where 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 are you planning to go next? Where where are well, your thoughts and why? I I always wanted to climb Mount Fuji. Okay. And I've been doing a little bit of research on it. It's uh, about an eight-hour climb. Wow. Uh, and you can break it up. As an old man, I would. Uh, <laughs> you just have to make the reservations. You you know, you're not climbing from the, the base of the mountain. You're, uh, you're going up to the point where cars can go up to, which is station five. And then, um, and then start your climb. And it's uh, about a four or five hour, I think, initial hike. Uh, and then you get to another sta uh, station up there. I think it's station eight where you, if you rent in advance, you can get a cot to lie down on and then take, uh, take in the sun uh, sunrise. At, uh, you get up at three and do the last few hours hiking. And then uh, you're at the top of the mountain for the sunrise, which I hear is spectacular. And you just got to be lucky with the weather. So that that's your your next uh, goal is to that's climb my, Mount that's Fuji. That's my goal this year. And and if uh, if somebody wants to join you, how do they go about joining you? Can they or, or find some more advice from you? How how would they contact you? Well, you you, you can use my email address. It's uh, kingkailua at gmail dot com. K i n g k a i l u a at gmail dot com. And you're willing and to share I your have, knowledge. I'm willing to share my uh, contacts, my knowledge. Uh, you're welcome to, uh, yeah, to all of that. I haven't set the dates yet. I'm working around uh, some the calendar, but I'm looking yeah. at fall, September, October timeframe. Okay. Now here's my last question for you, um, and and briefly, if you can. Tell me, what, 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 what have you learned from walking? And what have you learned about life? What have you learned about people that you met? Well, well you know, it, it's just a peaceful thing. Um, what have I learned? Uh, I've learned a lot of different cultures, a lot about different cultures, uh, different ways of life. Not everybody thinks the way you do. And uh, I guess it's, it's being tolerant of others and being patient with others because not, like I say, not everybody thinks and does things the way you do. And, and if, you can, if you can be somewhat patient and tolerant and, and enjoy, just enjoy the environment that you're in, I think uh, it's a bit of a peace of mind and uh, will hopefully give you longevity so 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 you know i hear you saying that walking kind of brings you together with other people and maybe if we were all out there walking uh yeah. it would it would be helpful huh if we were all walking well, meeting each other on the trail that would might might be a good result from that maybe i, I think i think it would be even in manawili you know walking around and talking to the people it's it's a great thing well, Robbie Jessel, thank you very much. I enjoyed hearing about your walking travels and how you mix it all up and what you get out of it. So, aloha. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll see you on the walk.